Good morning and welcome Narberth Presbyterian Church family and friends to worship on August 2nd, 2020. This week, Sunday classes continue to meet at 8 o'clock and at 11 o'clock. Everyone is invited to join via Zoom. And at 7.15 on the next three Friday evenings, weather permitting, Pastor Steve will be meeting folks out in the parking lot for a study on the final chapters of Philip Yancey's book, The Jesus I Never Knew. And in case of inclement weather, provisions have been made in the chapel. Are you missing your Narberth Presbyterian Church friends? Would you like to chat with them? Beginning this week on Thursday evening, Gabby Anik and Naveen Daniel will be hosting a get together on Zoom. Catch up, reconnect, and enjoy the company of your NPC friends. It's that time of year again when the nominating committee seeks recommendations for the offices of elder and deacon to begin in January 2021. If you have individuals to suggest for either elder or deacon, please email into Bemke and the committee with one, the person's name, two, whether they are to serve as elder or deacon, and three, the reason for your recommendation. You can find out more details about all these things in the weekly email newsletter Karen sends out, or you can call the office and speak with her directly. We're thankful today that Brent Nikolai is helping to lead us in worship. And since it's the first Sunday of a new month, it's a joy and a privilege to join in Holy Communion. As we say here, we invite all who trust in Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior, all who desire to trust in the Lord Jesus, to know that you are welcome to receive the sacrament of communion, regardless of your denominational affiliation. We're glad that this is the Lord's table and not that of any particular denomination. If you plan to receive communion, you should have some bread prepared and some juice, and after the words of institution, I will invite you to eat the bread, signifying the body of Christ. And then I'll invite you to drink from the cup, signifying the blood of Christ. And we will do so each time together as a sign of our unity in Christ. Our practice is to invite children also to receive communion with the blessing and guidance of their parents. As we think of those we're remembering in prayer, Julie, Linda, Joe, and all undergoing treatment for cancer and other chronic conditions appreciate our faithful ongoing prayers. Eileen and Jerry Hover and all who continue to struggle with COVID also appreciate us lifting them up before the throne of grace. Let's pray for our children and our young people, their parents, and all the adults charged with their educational welfare as decisions are made for this fall. And for all of us, as we struggle to whatever degree with our fears and frustrations linked not only to the reality of the virus, but also to the news, as it continues to bear witness to the sin-induced inequities and divisions so entrenched in our country. May all we who bear the name of Christ also bear witness to God's power to make new, new individuals, a new community, one in which race and ethnicity are positive descriptors, and we all recognize and treat each other as neighbors, equally created in the image of God, of equal worth to God, and so of equal worth to me, to us. This new community, the church, that's us, will always be God's work in progress. God is patient beyond what any of us are, God is not content for us to remain where we are. So this week, let's pray for the light and life of Christ to shine ever more brightly in and through our day-to-day -day lives with each other so that all people can find in this church a place, a people, shining with the light and life of the Lord. People who, like Jesus, welcome everyone who comes to us seeking him. Our call to worship comes to us today from Aaron, Andrea, Asher, and Anna Ogle. 